And we're back once again at chapter 15, verse uh, 13. And there came a messenger to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. And David said unto all his servants who were with him at Jerusalem, Arise, and let us flee, for we shall not escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly, and bring calamity upon us, and seek the city with the air of the sword. And the king's servant said unto the king, Behold, your servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. And the king went forth, and all his household after him. And the king left ten women which were concubines to keep the house. Notes. Now at this time David wrote several of the Psalms. Psalms 3 through 4, Psalms 40 and 41, and Psalm 63. All of this, the writing of the Psalms as given to him by the Holy Spirit, despite his past problems, they show us how close to God that David actually is beginning to be. Verse 17. And the king went forth, and all the people after him, and tarried in a place that was far off. And all his servants passed on beside him. And all the Cherethites, and all the Pelethites, and all the Gittites, six hundred men which came after him from Gath, passed on before the king. Notes. I might go ahead and quickly add that these guys were not exactly pushovers. They were seasoned veterans of fighting. Verse 19. Then said the king to Ittai the Gittite, Why do you go also with us? Return to your place and abide with the king, for you are a stranger and also an exile. Notes. Now, obviously this man was a Gentile, but now a proselyte to the Jewish faith. Uh, Ittai's going to have some common sense that is actually going to... Well, we'll just go ahead and read. Verse 20. Whereas you came but yesterday... Should I this day make you go up and down with us, seeing I go where I may, return thou, and take back your brethren? Mercy and truth be with you. And Ittai answered the king and said, As the Lord lives, and as my lord the king lives, surely in what place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there will also your servant be. Notes this guy has a consecration very similar to that of Ruth the Moabitess. Verse 22, And David said to Ittai, Go and pass over. And Ittai the Gittite passed over, and all his men and all the little ones who were with him. Notes, The presence of all his family with him shows that this man had broken entirely with the Philistines and left his, left his country for good, and he vowed to go with David wherever David went. In other words, David's fortunes would be his fortunes and misfortunes and whatnot, whatever that may have actually have been. Well, this converted Gentile showed more spiritual sense, consequently, than most of Israel of that time. Verse 23. And all the country wept with a loud voice, and all the people passed over. The king also himself passed over the brook Kidron, and all the people passed over toward the way of the wilderness. Continuing, And lo, Zadok also, and all the Levites were with him, bearing the Ark of the Covenant. And they set down the Ark of God, and Abiathar went up, until all the people had done passing out of the city. Notes. This is a bit strange here, but both men, Zadok and Abiathar, served as high priest at this particular time. Verse 25, And the king said unto Zadok, Carry back the Ark of God into the city. If I shall find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me again, and show me both it and his habitation. But if he thus say, I have no delight in you, behold, here am I, let him do to me as seems good unto him. Notes. Now David places himself entirely within the hands of God. Verse 27. The king said also unto Zadok the priest, Are you not a seer? Return into the city in peace, and your sons with you, to Hamaz, or ah, Ahamaz, your son, and Jonathan, the son of Abiathar. Notes. In other words, take the covenant with you, or take the Ark of the Covenant with you. Continuing. 
See, I will tarry in the plain of the wilderness until there come word from you to certify me. Zadok therefore and Abiathar carried the ark of God again to Jerusalem, and they tarried there. Notes. In other words, uh, they obeyed David, and they did exactly what he said. Verse 30. And David went up by the ascent of Mount Olivet, and wept as he went up, and had his head covered, and he went barefoot. And all the people who were with him covered every man his head, and they went up weeping as they went up. Notes. The grace of God is the basis of all blessing. David was conscious, uh, conscious that he merited only wrath, and this he publicly confessed with bared feet, covered head, and tear-dimmed eyes. Verse 31. And one told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray you, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. Notes. Well, with that statement, uh, David prayed, but his faith seemed to be quite shaken by things. And who could really blame him? He's still human. Verse 32. And it came to pass that when David was come to the top of the mount, where he worshipped God, behold, Hushai the archite came to meet him with his coat rent and earth upon his head. Notes. Well, also, this is signifying his grief uh, was very, very severe at what was happening. He didn't like it one bit. Uh, verse 33. Unto whom David said, If you pass on with me, then you shall be a burden unto me. Uh, notes. Well, my own personal opinion, this was more than likely because Hushai was an old man at that time, and well, you don't exactly throw a bunch of you throw a bunch of equipment on an old man and get him to move fast. But anyways, in my opinion, verse 34. But if you return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be your servant, O king, as I have been your father's servant hitherto, so will I now also be your servant, that may you for me defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. Notes. David had prayed for the help of the Lord, but what he now proposes was not really the help he was actually needing. David was meeting trickery by trickery, which the Lord could not condone. Jehovah, our God, can never be a party to any sin or wrongdoing of any nature. Hushai was evidently also one of the wise men of Israel. Verse 35, And have you not there with you Zadok and Abiathar the priest? Therefore it shall be that what things soever you shall hear out of the king's house, you shall tell it to Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Behold, they have there with them their two sons, Ahimez, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. And by them you shall send unto me everything that you can hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. Notes. Keep in mind that Absalom's doing this so he can take the throne. Verse, or chapter 16. And when David was a little past the top of the hill, behold, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of asses saddled, and upon them two hundred loaves of bread, and an hundred bunches of raisins, and an hundred of summer fruits, and a bottle of wine. And the king said unto Ziba, What do you mean by these? And Ziba said, The asses be for the king's household to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine that such as be faint in the wilderness may drink. And the king said, And where is your master's son? Speaking of Mephibosheth, of course. Scripture. And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abides at Jerusalem. For he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Notes. Ziba lied about Mephibosheth. We'll pick up in chapter 16, verse 4. Thank you, and God bless.